Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Sayyidatul Fatihah binti Abdul Hamid And my main trade number is 2116260 So to continue to uh, for the rebutting the argument Made by the opposition Stated that the death penalty is uh, equal uh, to punish the offender However, if it is equal then it is fair and justice to the offender so, according to Amnesty International, stated that there are countries that use the death penalty as the punishment against the minority and also the protester, which what happened in Myanmar in 2021. They sentenced the, uh, to death 90 people and most of them are the protester and also the journalist, which has no right to appeal. And this is clear, uh, it's not justice and fair to them. Uh, it also uh, in addition, this is also disturbing because uh, they use the death penalty, uh, death penalty as the punishment on non lethal crime, uh, which is against the main reasons of the punishment of the death penalty, uh, which detect the crime, a uh, serious crime like uh, murder, which is in reality is not detected from the crime. Apart from that, uh, in Malaysia too, there are also researchers that mention uh, there are numerous violations toward the fair trials of the offenders. This is uh, because uh, the defendant or the offenders cannot uh, uh, afford to hire a good lawyer in assisting them during the investigation which resulted in lack of prepared and effective defense and also they are absent for the fair trial. If, if the punishment was praised and uh, was pressed after the unfair trial, this is not justice and also violate the human right to life. This is also supported by the United Nations, which uh, also mentioned that the safeguard to use the death penalty, actually uh, the defenders or the offenders must have the fair trial, including educate the legal assistant to enhance the justice improving them innocent before sentence to death. This is because to avoid from innocent people from being wrongfully convicted by the judges as the uh, by the judges. So in addition um, uh, if the convicted person later being proved innocent and at that time uh, he or she has been executed then it cannot bring them alive. However, if the, the, uh, the death penalty is abolished, then innocent people can be avoid from being wrongfully convicted. Uh, thus, it can be said that even though the death penalty is uh, equal to punish the offenders, however, it's not guaranteed enough to enhance the justice and affair to them. So, continuing with my argument, I will point out uh, the opinion from the expert in this matter. So according to Mr. Rangkapal Singh, our Deputy Minister stated that the abolishment of the death penalty actually in line with uh, the purpose of respecting to right uh, to life for every individual. Uh, and also the basic principle in every punishment uh, in Malaysia is to rehabilitate the prisoner. He also added that the death penalty actually does not brought, uh, brought the result as it was intended to bring in. In addition, uh, the abolishment of the death penalty actually uh, not only give the right to life for every individual but also give a chance to the prisoner to repent themselves who has been charged under the capital punishment. Not to mention that the judges also have more power in discretion uh, in the, in to decide uh, either to punish them under the death penalty or imprisonment uh, of life which not extended to 40 years. This also uh, being supported by the United Nations which they agree and also give their support for the Malaysia to abolish the death penalty. Penalty. So apart from that, the in the Amnesty International view, they also added that the death penalty actually negates the ability of the judges to in exercise, exercising their discretion as it has 
to follow what has been right in the act along with the punishment. Uh, and if the death penalty was being uh, abolished, then the judges can carry out the punishment uh, which be more human like the imprisonment life. Uh, and this is also uh, in line with the Article 5 Clause 1 uh, of the Federal Constitution which stated that the right uh, to life for every individual. It should be noted that if the abolishment of the death penalty was being abolished, then the prisoner have the chance to repent themselves and as, they, as it gives their new breath to continue their life and also uh, can uh, to rehabilitate the prisoner. Uh, furthermore, they also added that the death penalty is actually too severe as it increased the executing of the innocent people. This is because the capital punishment is irrevocable and they also have raised issue to object the to uh, in objection to use the capital punishment uh, in drug related cases because there are lack of access for the fair trial. Uh, like in China, in Indonesia and also Arab as they have weakened protection for a fair trial for the offenders of the drug cases. Uh, the the expert from uh, of the United uh, Nations also uh, stress out that uh, those who has sentenced to death actually some people uh, come from the ethnic minority and some of came from the disability and also some have the mental issue uh, which is show that uh, if uh, if the uh, abolishment uh, of the death penalty was not success then the the innocent people like the disability people or the uh, or the mental people can be Convicted wrongfully. Therefore, the abolishment of the death penalty must be success. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Zulhami Zaman Masullah and I am the first opposer from the opposition team. Before I start by presenting the first argument from the uh, opposition team, I will start by rebutting the first argument presented by the first proposer, um, which is the death penalty. Uh, the mandatory death sentence or penalty must be abolished as it will give the court the opportunity or the ability to give out reasonable judgments and punishments according to the different circumstances of the offenders. Now, I would like to say uh, that the opposition uh, that the opposition agrees with this stance uh, taken by the uh, proposition team that the mandatory death sentence or penalty must be abolished. Looking at the current circumstance of the country, which is that uh, the mandatory death penalty. Uh, in Malaysia has been abolished. However, we would like to propose that the arguments given by both parties in this session today should be uh, regarding on the generality of the death sentence or penalty itself rather than, ben uh, rather than being uh, specific on the mandatory death penalty. Hence, I would like to suggest, or I would like to say that the first argument given by the proposition team is irrelevant to this current debate as we have achieved common ground in abolishing mandatory death penalty, but it is the absolute abolishment of the death sentence is the thing that should be uh, debatable in this session. Moving on to the first argument uh, by the opposition team, which is the mandatory, uh, which is the death penalty must be abol must not be abolished, as it is not depriving of a person's life under Article Five, Clause One of the Federal Constitution, if the law providing that death sentence is uh, in line with law. Now. Um, what is the meaning of in line or safe uh, as in accordance with law under Article 5 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution? Uh, we will be referring to uh, some cases to actually explain this. The first case is the case, uh, the Singaporean case of Ong Ashwan against public prosecutor in 1981. Uh, in this case, uh, the appellant appealed before the Privy, Privy Council that the provision in Section 15 of the Control of Drugs Act 1973 that Proof of possession of controlled drugs in excess of the minimum quantities stated in the section of Section 15 gives rise to a rebuttable presumption that such possession is for the purpose of trafficking is unconstitutional as it against the fundamental rule of natural justice that a person shall be punished only after it has been proven that they have committed such offence. Which means that uh, the appellant argued that uh, that section has give rise to a... Um, presumption of guilt, which is not in line with the rules of uh, natural justice, which is a person should only be punished only after they've been proven uh, guilty. However, the court in this case uh, stated that um, 
uh, it does not give rise to the presumption of guilt. Instead, it gives rise to a rebuttable presumption, which the uh, accused or the appellant can rebut in the court uh, where the fair trial or the fair hearing is given to the appellant or the accused. Therefore, we can see that the meaning of law in Ong Achuan case is referring to the law which is in line with the fundamental rules of natural justice. This is also in line with the Malaysian. Uh, this is also applied in the Malaysian case of Che Anibin Itam, uh, 1984, where in this case the appellant was convicted in the Sessions Court of an offence under Section 4 of the Firearms Increase Penalties Act, 1971, and he was in prison. Uh, he was sentenced to imprisonment for life. Now, uh, he also stated that uh, the section uh, is unconstitutional as uh, life imprisonment is not uh, it is depriving a person of their life which violates Article 5 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. However, uh, the court firmly establishes that the meaning of the word law um, in Article 5 refers to a system of law which incorporates fundamental rules of natural justice and there is nothing oppressive in the legislatively defined sentence which is... Um, uh, the sentence of imprisonment for life for the specific offence in question committed under the 1971 Act. Now let's move on to the relationship uh, between um, the meaning of law and to the first argument from the uh, opposition. Uh, um, in the case of PP against Lau Ki Ho, uh, 1983, uh, the respondent had been charged with having ammunition under his control in a security area without lawful excuse or authority, contrary to Section 57, Clause 1, uh, Subsection 1 of the Internal Security Act 1960, which carries a mandatory death sentence. Uh, the court in this case decided that. Um, the constitution itself gives the possibility or right to the parliament to provide for the death penalty as in Article 5 Clause 1 because it is stated that um, no person shall be deprived of their life if only the law is not um, in line with the rules of uh, natural justice. Therefore, um, the uh, section which uh, the section in uh, the Internal Security Act 1960 uh, which, provides for uh, which provides for death penalty um, is constitutional. In the case of Ang Chuan, uh, Ong Ah Chuan once again also stated that the main objective of imposing a death sentence for offences that society regards with particular disdain or abhorrence is that it should act as a deterrent or prevention. Therefore, so long as the law providing the death sentence is in line with the fundamentals of natural justice, which the laws in Malaysia, as I've stated earlier, provide death sentences as punishments, are definitely in line with, it cannot be said to be depriving a person's life. Hence, it is constitutional. Now, the reason why we limited the scope of death sentence in Malaysia is because um, internationally, it is also stated that death sentence is not in line uh, with uh, the right of human rights as it is depriving a person of, a, uh, of their life. And this has been, um, uh, this has been argued uh, based on the argument that I've presented earlier, which is that if that um, it, death penalty is in line with the rules of natural justice, with, which is that accused uh, or that criminal has been given the right for them to defend themselves before the punishment is given, um, then the death penalty is constitutional and it is in line um, with the rule of natural justice and it will not be depriving of a person's life. Therefore, death sentence must not be abolished based on this first argument given by the opposition. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And my name is Siti or Aizulaifa Bikri Azhar as the second speaker for the proposition state. Are you deliberate on the test that this must be abolished on the basis of it is not the most effective punishment to prevent crimes? But before I come to my own arguments, let us first have a look at what the opposition has said earlier. So I want to respond to the opponent's argument, which is she states that the death sentence does not deprive a person's life as according to Article 5, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. So I see her point, but how about the accused person is a disabled person, whether mentally or physically disabled? Have they actually got free to be a drug king or known as Kodai Dada? As mentioned in articles and news, these people are usually targeted by drug dealers out there because of their conditions, states that they do not understand the nature and also they do not know the consequences for that significance because of their disabilities. In fact, 
they will be forced to involve in that syndicate or the ticket of the artist's abilities. Nevertheless, they still can be charged under 39B of the Dangerous Truck Act 1952 that actually carries a uh, death sentence even though they may not be guilty based on facts. So I would like to uh, recall one of the cases that happened to Malaysian to Malaysian citizen but the uh, sentence was imposed in Singapore. So what happened in this case was the accused person, namely like a trans kid who was a disabled man but found guilty for drug trafficking and sentenced with death penalty. Based on this case, I do not think that this is that what that under Article 5 Clause 1 that states it is accordance with law. What I understand here is accordance with law meaning that the concept of natural justice must be applied. And uh, this is actually already elaborated by the uh, opponents by referring to the case of O Archwell against PP and in that case actually it uh, states that the accused shall be punished for an offense when it has been established by proving physical and mental elements. So based on that that case I mentioned uh, earlier, I could not find another part where it relates to a disabled person. So the best case is actually the accused person was uh, disabled that actually had intellectual disabled disabilities and he can also be sentenced with death penalty. So how can you say that the punishment can only be imposed when mentally and physically uh, of the accused person was proven? But in this case, it is a claim that mentally it is failed to prove. So uh, even though this case actually happened in Singapore, but it still can be implemented in Malaysia if the death sentence is not abolished and still implemented. So. Uh, the lawmaker must consider the conditions of the accused person before deciding to not abolish the death sentence. Hence, the death penalty must be abolished as it will deprive a person's life, especially a disabled people. So the second point of the argument that the death sentence should be abolished is on the basis that it is not the most effective punishment to prevent crimes in Malaysia, especially in Malaysia. So, we can see that nowadays the number of crimes are still increasing uh, even with the implementation of the death sentence in Malaysia. In fact, this is actually supported by the Deputy Law Minister Lemi Ram Kapalsing who stated that there is no research proving that the death penalty is the most effective crime prevention as its effectiveness can be guaranteed due to various factors inclusive prosecutions and crime rates. Besides, more than 85 nations have abolished death penalty since 1976 according to the Death Penalty Abolishment Center. The truth is the accused person committed an offense such as drug trafficking because of their conditions, their life, their uh, mental states. Somehow, people are desperate because of their conditions. Thus, they need to commit the crime. In this situation, I believe that they know the uh, consequences and also they know the punishment that will be imposed on them but they still commit the crime. It shows that the death punishment actually cannot detain the public or individual from committing crimes. A few offenses that carry the death penalty are murder under section 302 of the code and also 3 Libby of uh, DDA 1952. So for example, a case that happened in 2023, two accused men were charged for murder under section 302 of PC. So based on the fact, the killing happened due to failure of the blackmailing of the victim. 
So for the fact it cannot be denied that they did not know the punishment at all of the offences that they committed as they are adult, said and having the knowledge about the consequences. Same goes to the other crimes that uh, carries death sentence such as drug trafficking because based on the article from Malaysia Gazette, the common reason given by the accused person is poverty. I do not think that all of them were not exposed to for the punishment since drug trafficking is a famous crime in Malaysia. So, people have to eat food on that punishment, death factors punishment. In reality, they are willing to put their shoes for this crime because of their own reasons, regardless of the death factors that will be imposed on them. So, as we have seen, the acute on the death factors is not the most effective punishment to prevent the crime, and therefore, I said that the death sentence should be abolished in Malaysia. Thank you. I am fighting my Sarah, the second opposition. But before I come to my own argument, let us first have a look at what the second proposition has said, in which she stated that the death sentence is not the most effective punishment to prevent crime. We, as an opposition, we believe that death penalty is an effective punishment to decrease and also to prevent crime cases as it would end the criminal's life. Therefore, the criminal cannot commit the same offence or other offences again. So, can you imagine if death penalty is being abolished and only jail sentences or fines are imposed to that specific criminal, surely the criminal could repeat the same offence again. Because why? Because the punishment is not even heavy and this would lead to the danger to the society. And I quoted Law and Home Affairs Minister of Singapore, K. Shanmugam, which stated that the 15 gram of pure heroin required for the death penalty is equal to 1,250 straws of heroin and may fit 180, 180 drug addicts for, week, for a week. And this leads uh, at least to a death of a person. And the, the minister also pointed some evidence that the punishment of the death penalty had actually reduced the statistic of certain crimes such as uh, robbery involving firearms and also kidnapping and apart from that uh, in the four years following of the introduction of the mandatory death sentence for trafficking more than 100 sorry 1200 grams of opium in 1990 it was actually discovered that there was a 66 percent reduction in the average net weight of traffic uh, for the opium so this actually proves that uh, the death penalty will actually reduce the number of crime cases and let me come to my second argument which we believe that death penalty must not be abolished as its abolishment will increase the number of crime cases because we know that it is actually common to everyone that the serious crimes such as murdering kidnapping, drug trafficking, etc. Uh, will be punished uh, with death penalty as one is found guilty due to its severity. But uh, So this actually would lead to the criminal to think twice before committing that offence. And we know that a jail, a, a jail term might not be as uh, effective as death punishment because uh, they could do the same offence again. So the death uh, and also the, ob the abolition of death penalty may send the wrong signal uh, that such crimes are not being taken seriously, that uh, the offence of murder is not being taken seriously and the, the, the right of the victims would surely be oppressed. And and uh, take, take for example uh, drug addict or drug trafficking cases in which section 39B subsection 2 of dangerous uh, sorry, dangerous drugs Act 1952 which provides that uh, drug trafficker uh, shall be punished or conviction with death or imprisonment for life and if he is not being sentenced to death be punished with weeping of not less than 15 strokes and also we can refer to the case uh, to, the, to the court of appeals case of Kuang T. Hang and public prosecutor that the accused was uh, apprehended when she was carrying a luggage 
uh, which contained drugs that was concealed in a secret screwed compartment in the bottom part of the luggage. So consequently, she was charged with the offence of trafficking in dangerous drugs under uh, Dangerous Drugs Act 1952 and sentenced to the death penalty. So we, we really believe that the judgment made by the learned judges was indeed a fair one as uh, the drug trafficking would kill a lot of people, will, uh, would actually produce more drug addicts and then uh, will kill that drug addicts. So this can also be supported with the National Anti-Drug Agency's record that there were 127606 drug addicts between 2013 and 2015 with pinning being the highest number. So we could see that uh, the, the number was very huge and if drug, if 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 uh, death penalty is being abolished, uh, surely it will actually increase the number of death to the drug addicts. And also, the United Nations also estimated that for every case, there could be another four unrecorded cases. So, can you imagine there are a lot of cases uh, recorded and also unrecorded one? And this number could not have been reduced unless uh, the drug trafficking are subjected to harsh punishment, uh, especially death penalty. And this menace is a slow death to our young generation has caused the gov and, and also has caused the government uh, R RM 7.9 million since 2013 for the rehabilitation and treatment of drug addicts. Therefore, we believe that the punishment of death penalty should not be abolished as its abolishment would actually increase the number of crime cases. As for the second argument from the opponent, the death penalty abolishment will increase the number of crime. In discussing the issue, the most relevant thing is that is there any evidence that shows the punishment of the death penalty to criminal reduce the number of crime in society? Although the punishment sounds cruel and scary, usually the criminal acts in ignorance of what will happen to them after committing the crime. A big fuss nowadays, there are many countries around the world implementing the death penalty as punishment for criminals also including Malaysia. The question that arises is that does the death penalty deter crime? In American Civil Liberties Union Questionnaire, the answer has been negatively answered as there is no credible evidence that the death penalty deters crime more effectively than other punishments. Besides, states that have death penalty laws do not have lower crime rates or murder rates than states without such laws. And states that have abolished capital punishment show no significant change in either crime or murder rates. It is seen that the death penalty has no deterrent effect. In addition, there are myths that the death penalty reduced the crime of drug. In March 2008, the executive director of the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime called for an end to the use of the death penalty for drug offenses. He said, although drug kills, I don't believe we need to kill because of drug. Other than that, the use of the death penalty for drug offenses is also seen as a violation of international law. Based on Article 6, Subsection 2 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, in countries which have not abolished the death penalty, sentence of death may be imposed only for the most serious crime. To be highlighted, that, it is not to say that this crime is not serious but this crime can still be curbed in other ways than imposing the death penalty. The death penalty does not show a positive impact on the nation and society as many countries have chosen to abolish the death penalty from their country. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, more than 70% of the world's countries have abolished capital punishment in law or practice. As of July 2022, the most recent countries to uplaw the death penalty are Kazakhstan and Papua New Guinea. So, in Malaysia, for now, the death penalty is currently retained for 33 offenses, including 11 for which it is the mandatory punishment, and in recent years has been used mostly for murder and drug trafficking. 
on 27th March 2023, the Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Law and Institutional Reform, Azalina Osman said, tabled two bill in Parliament to abolish the mandate mandatory death penalty and give just discretionary powers, remove imprisonment for life until natural death as an alternative punishment, and grant the possibility to all those on death row to benefit from the reform. From this, what we can see is that many countries that have abolished the death penalty and there is also the country that is in the face of abolishing the death penalty. In conclusion, the death penalty is not an effective way to impose the criminal in decreasing the amount of crime happening in society. Next, I will proceed with the second point for our topic that is the death sentence must be abolished because it is incompatible with human rights and human dignity. In Article 5, Subsection 1 of the Federal Constitution, it states that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty save in accordance with the law. Based on the above provision, what can be derived is that every person has the right to their own life. The word person in Article 5, Subsection 1 refers to citizen and non-citizen and includes artificial persons like sheep or aircraft on whom the law can conserve legal personality. Life, as mentioned in the provision, has various meanings in Malaysia and also encompasses the right to live with human dignity. For instance, in India, life has been held to include such necessities of life as adequate nutrition, clothing, shelter, and many more. It includes protections against torture, mutilation, and amputation. Personal liberty means the power of a person to do what is deemed right by law. For instance, in India, the right to personal liberty includes also the right to travel abroad, but this right is not part of personal liberty in Malaysia. The word law may be interpreted as either any law enacted or which has been passed by a competent legislator in accordance with the established procedure, or law that includes within it the fundamental rules of natural justice. Furthermore, life means as opposed to death. Every person in this world has the right to be alive without anyone could intervene in this right. No person could take any other person's lives except according to the law. As mentioned before, Article 5, Subsection 1 is concerned with the right to life. It focuses on protecting an individual freedom from unreasonable detention as opposed to protecting personal safety. Moreover, Every person has a right to personal freedom. This means a person must not be imprisoned or detained without good reason. In addition, the right to life is much wider in terms of scopes and application than the right to personal liberty, but is to be highlighted that not all activities can be claimed under the right to life without a valid reason. The death sentence is shown to violate the right to life which happens to be the most basic right that a human has. That sentence also breached the right not to be subject to torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. Furthermore, the existence of the death sentence sabotages human dignity, which is inherent to every human being. Even if a person commits a mistake in addition to a serious offense, there is no need to impose a punishment that is too heavy to take someone's life. Appropriate punishment shall be imposed on the offender and the objective of the punishment are intent to teach a lesson and instill a sense of repentance in the offender so that he will not commit the same crime again besides allowing the offender to seek forgiveness from the victim's family. It is also to be noted that human beings have no right to punish offenders that involve taking someone's life because life is a right given by God and only God has the right to take it away. This can be illustrated by the Quranic verse mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 32, Whosoever kills a human being without any reason like manslaughter or corruption on earth, it is as though he had killed all mankind. Based on the verse clearly shown that the act of taking others' life is bad and must be avoided upon all mankind. Hence, no human being has any right by himself to take human life in retaliation or for causing mischief on his earth. Therefore, it is incumbent on every human being that under no circumstances should be guilty of taking a human life.
Moving on to the third argument by the opposition team, which is the death penalty should not be abolished as it is proportionate and equal pursuant to the Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. Before submitting our third argument, we would like to rebut on the third argument from the proposition team, which is the death sentence is incompatible with human rights and human dignity. Um, indeed, the proposition team had relied heavily on the Article 5 of the Federal Constitution in regards to the death penalty. However, they failed to distinguish the correlation between the death penalty and how it is incompatible with human rights and human dignity. By providing the meaning of word life and law blindly without taking into the real interpretation of Article 5 of the Federal Constitution, it can be said that the proposition team only touched on the surface of law. They also failed to distinguish the principle principle of safe accordance with law in article 5 of the constitution with the argument with their argument in abolishing the death penalty as we would like to highlight again from the case of Ong Ah Chuan whereby in this case the court uh, the court said that the primary goal by the legislature in imposing a death sentence is to serve as a deterrent as long as the law concerned with the death penalty is consistent with the fundamentals of natural justice which in Malaysia um, providing such death sentences as punishment uh, consistent with Article 5 and Fundamental of Justice, and it cannot be argued that death sentence is depriving a person's liberty or make it unconstitutional. Now let's move on to our point, which is death penalty should not be abolished as it is proportionate and equal pursuant to the Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. Article 8 of the Federal Constitution provides that all persons are equal before the law and entitled to equal protection of law. In addition, the article also mentioned in a clause 2, which uh, read as, uh, except as expressly authorized by this Constitution, there shall be no discrimination against citizens on the ground of their religion, race, descent, place of birth, or gender in any law. So basically, the idea of Article 8 of the Federal Constitution with regard to our discussion on the death penalty should not be abolished provided that every person is equal in terms of proportionality and equal punishment regardless their status, religious, race, and etc. Indeed, Article 8 of the Constitution provides equal before law, which refers to nothing that is above the law, whereby all persons shall be punished equally and proportionally, while equal protection of the law elucidated that every person will be protected or sentenced with the same law provided in the same circumstances without arbitration or unnecessary discrimination. In simple words, the law implies that all persons is equally subject to law regardless of their position. In the context of the death penalty under the Article 8 of the Constitution, the punishment imposed on the offender is equal before the law and provides equal protection of law, which means the death penalty is proportionate, non-arbitrary, and non-discriminatory to all persons in the same circumstances. In other words, um, it can be said that if A and B committed the same offense within the same circumstances, for example, intentional murder, then both of them shall be charged with the same law, shall be given a right to be heard, and will be sentenced with the same punishment once they were found guilty. In the Singaporean case of Ong Ah Chuan against Public Prosecutor, which dealt with the question in regards to constitutionality on the imposition of the death penalty and the misuse of Drug Act 1973 with the Singapore Constitution. In this case, the appellant argued that Section 15 of the State Act is unconstitutional as it is violates Article 12 of the Singaporean Constitution and the death penalty imposed in such section is not proportionate and was arbitrary. Article 12 plus 1 of the Singapore Constitution mentioned that all persons are equal before the law and entitled to equal protection of law, which in pari materia with Article 8 of the Federal Constitution in Malaysia. The call in the court in this uh in this case held that the death penalty for drug trafficking um in the state section is consistent with the article 12 of the singapore constitution so in this case the court expressed that interpretation of article 12 of the singapore constitution in regards to criminal punishment whereby it provides the equality before law and equal protection of law by classifying the individuals for the purpose of punishment to be affected by the state circumstances according to what has been defined by the acts, which means the offender will be charged according to the offense stated in the acts, and another person who did or another person who committed the similar circumstances of the commissions of the offense will be provided with the same equal treatment. No person shall be punished harshly according to the class of the individual. The different type of punitive treatment only provided in the situation where there is difference and dissimilarity of the circumstances of the offence committed.
In this case also, the appellant contentions in regard of discrimination on the imposition of death penalty for possession of drug for 15 grams or more, which the appellant argued that it is harsh and uh, it is harsh and arbitrary compared to the imposition of the punishment for the possession of drug less than 15 grams, which is, does not result in the imposition of the death penalty, which is not arbitrary argued by the appellant. Indeed, um, in this case, such dissimilarity in the circumstances justifying the differentiation of the punishment imposed. In addition, the question of social policy was considered in ensuring appropriate punishment of each class of offence. The rational and social object for the capital punishment in the Drug Act was for the purpose to control the spread of illegal drugs and it is was done as a form of deterrence. Hence, making the punishment is equal and not violating Article 12 of the Singapore Constitution, which in pari materia with Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. Also, in the case of PP against Lao Ki Ho, whereby in this case mentioned about the death penalty punishment in line with equality before law and equal protection of law. Um, in this case, the federal court considered on the following issue, whether or not the mandatory death sentence provided under Section 57, Subsection 1 of the Internal Security Act 1960 is ultra-virus and violates Article 5 Clause 1, 8 Clause 1, and 1 to 1 Clause 1 of the Constitution. As in this case, the court addressed that all criminal law involved classification of individuals for the purpose of punishment. Equality before law and equal protection of law require that a who commits the similar circumstances of offences with B should be punished with the same law accordingly with the same punishment. What Article 8 ensure uh, to the individual is the right to the equal treatment with other individual with the same circumstances. Hence, every person who being charged under the Section 57, Subsection 1 of the Internal Security Act will be liable for the same punishment and such punishment was deemed as not discriminatory. Indeed, uh, the court in this case also highlighted that the function of the legislature is to ensure the appropriate punishment for persons charged under the Internal Security Act and Arms Act, provided that the factors of the parliament adopts as constituting, constituting the dissimilarity in circumstances, which justifies dissimilarity in punitive treatment, uh, is not purely arbitrary, but bears a reasonable relation to the object of the law, hence it is not inconsistent with the Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. Article 8 is concerned with the equal punitive treatment for the similar legal gate, not equal punitive treatment for equal moral blameworthiness. Hence, there is nothing usual in a capital sentence being used as a type of the punishment, as indeed it is as a form of punishment that was proven as uh, providing the trends in the criminal rate. So in a nutshell, it can be proven that the death penalty is constitutional as it is equal, proportionate and non-arbitrary person to the Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'd like to emphasize that there are various reasons why the death penalty should be abolished. And one of them being that the death penalty puts such a high risk towards the uh, the criminals because we not we don't know whether the convicted person is actually innocent or not because when the death penalty has been imposed by the judge there is no turning back because if in the end the the person who has been convicted guilty is actually an inner person an innocent person the the conviction cannot be taken aback because the punishment itself cannot be reversed because once the life of a person has been taken, um, it is it it stops there and you cannot reverse that punishment because you cannot bring someone's life back to life since they're they're already dead. So in order for the death penalty to be wholly abolished, there must be certain procedures that must be taken into account. So Malaysia has introduced uh, to introduce the abolishment of death penalty. This country has introduced the abolishment of the mandatory death penalty first. So the abolishment of this death sentence has been introduced and there are several attempts to abolish the mandatory death penalty but it has been unsuccessful. So recently the bills to
to abolish this mandatory death penalty has been tabled by Datuk Seri Azalina Uthman, where she is the minister in the Prime Minister's Department, which she was in charge of the law and institutional reforms. She stated that the abolition of the mandatory death sentence is aimed at valuing the sanctity of life of every individual while ensuring justice and fairness for all. Based on her statement, we could see that every human life is sacred and must be protected at all costs. And in my opinion, the right to life should be absolute and so just because a criminal has taken someone else's life that doesn't mean that uh, that the government has the right to take the criminal's life because uh, it must be noted that it is really important to establish rehabilitation instead of retaliation. This is because rehabilitation is actually a crucial aspect for our criminal justice, criminal justice system in order for it to be improved. So rehabilitation is a belief that individuals who commit crimes should be given the opportunity to change their behavior and become productive members of society instead of imposing retaliation to them because I believe that each individual go through different situations or circumstances in life so their surroundings might be the cause of their behavior therefore the government or the society should help these individuals instead of imposing death penalty to them this is because everyone deserves a second chance in life to improve themselves, to improve themselves, and to become a better person. They just need a guidance or someone to help them to become a better person. So, the abolishment of the mandatory death sentence is a good first step to abolish the death sentence as a whole due to the reasons that will be explained later on by my group members. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Naila Nafisa. So before I proceed with my argument, I'm going to rebut first what have been presented by the proposal. So number one, the proposal argued that the death penalty should not be abolished based on the opinion of experts. So number one, they propose that um, the death penalty will actually risk, increase the risk of executing the innocents due to its nature of being irrevocable. However, we say that they actually had failed to acknowledge the current status quo on mandatory death penalty in Malaysia, which is now the death penalty or the mandatory death penalty is no longer being implemented in Malaysia. And for that reason, the judges are actually given the authority to exercise this and impose judgment on a case-to-case -case basis and therefore this argument is indeed outdated but nevertheless they also argue that the death penalty is too severe compared to the gravity of the offense committed and by because of that we say that the sentence actually commensurates with the offenses because of the grave effect such commission will cause because we refer to what have been mentioned by the former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri during a press statement on 10 June 2022. He mentioned that the death penalty will only be imposed on circumstances where the offender is found to be a hardcore drug trafficker to the extent of causing hundreds or even thousands of people to die due to the drugs that have been trafficked. Uh, trafficked. So if, it, if I may simplify, only person who have uh, equivalently caused death to a person or even more person as a result of the drugs that have been trafficked, then he will be imposed on death penalty. However, 
if the court finds that the offender should be given a second chance on several factors for example he had not caused uh, any death as a result of the drug traffic then on a discretionary basis he will be sentenced with life imprisonment and whipping instead so that is the first uh, rebuttal second we submit that they also fail to consider the fact that a person is being held up for such execution actually indicates that he had fulfilled the legal requirement to be heard before the court prior to such punishment being imposed on him for example the minimum legal requirement under section 37 of the dangerous drugs act 1952 for the offense of drug trafficking is that that person being arrested must be in possession of 15 grams of heroin or 200 grams of marijuana so that is the fulfillment of the legal requirement so now on the question of innocence we we say that it is actually up to the court to determine that and what we can actually hold on to is the presumption of innocence that is a person is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty and therefore the proposes contention that death penalty will increase uh, risk of innocent lives being um, being at the risk of being killed or and whatsoever will only um, is actually wrong because judiciary will only impose punishment once proven based on three things the facts of the case the evidence submitted and upon hearing submissions from both parties based on the principles of Audi Altram Partum and therefore no one will be punished until proven guilty before the court of law Thirdly, we do acknowledge that there is insufficient proof on the effectiveness of death penalty as a deterrent for severe offences. However, we say that abolishing it in total will actually lead to a reverse effect which cause a greater harm to the nation than benefit it. And this will be further discussed in our next argument. So now, I'm going to proceed with our last argument that is death penalty should not be abolished because it serves as a necessary general deterrence. So general deterrence actually applies to the would-be offenders, a person who are looking at the punishment meted out on other criminals. They try to uh, refrain from engaging the crime because they have uh, the fear of being punished with the same uh, penalty. So we say that this death penalty can be said to be the highest and most feared form of punishment because inherently human beings have fear of death and this fear of death or being killed which theoretically believed to be the greatest deterring power of death penalty there are no other uh, forms of punishment that is much more feared or scarier than death penalty so if I may quote the words of Sir James Fitzjames Stephen, uh, he mentioned that no other punishment deters men so effectively from committing crimes as the punishment of death and all that a man has has will he give for his life and in any secondary punishment however terrible it is there is hope but death is death and it cannot be at its terror cannot be described more forcibly so if I also may quote a statistic uh, analyzed by Moken and Gittings in 2013, it was mentioned that all the death sentences handed out in the United States between 1977 and 1997, it was found that each additional execution reduces homicides by five and each additional commutation increases homicides by five and each additional removal from death row generates one murder. Additionally, it was also found that in the United States, each execution results in, on average, three fewer murders and deters murder, which were previously thought to be undeterrable, such as crimes of passion and also murders by intimate partners. Now, the next important question is how to make it effective to serve its purpose. So we opine that the execution should be made in public to deter the general public. And similar approach is actually taken in the in the Islamic law, where the execution for hudud was conditioned to be made in public for the very purpose of two things. Number one, instilling fear, and number two, to educate the public to not commit the same crime. So if I may quote the words of renowned criminologist and philosopher Cesar Beccaria, it was stated that a punishment should be public, immediate and 
where necessary the least possible in the case given proportion to the crime and determined by the laws so in this regard the executive actually play a very very important role to ensure participation of the public as observers of the execution so if we can compare between life imprisonment and the death penalty in its role at giving deterring effect we argue that the former actually has higher post release recidivism effect so this recidivism effect actually refers to the rate of recommission of the crime by the convicted offenders after they being released we see that the certain crimes such as murder require high severity punishment to effectively morally inhibit others from actually committing the crime and a reduced penalty for such a grave crime will actually lead to a lower moral inhibition where one would view murder or drug trafficking as very tempting escape from a situation of emotional conflict and therefore to conclude death penalty should not be abolished to maintain its role as a general deterrence within the justice system in Malaysia so i believe that is all from the from the opposing team thank you so much and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh In rebutting the last argument that the death penalty should not be abolished because it serves as a necessary general deterrent, it must be noted that the death sentencing may not only for the purpose of deterrence, but there is also a possibility that the element of revenge might slip into the process and the policy behind sentencing cannot be about revenge. So it has to be about rehabilitation or retribution. So there are evidences from around the world has that has shown that the death penalty has no unique deterrent effect on any sort of crimes so many people have argued that abolishing the death penalty leads to higher crime rates the un special rapporteur on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions acting as an expert witness in a challenge to indonesia's indonesia's constitution told the constitutional court that death is not an appropriate response to the crime of drug trafficking apart from indonesia china iran and and singapore There are some of the countries which execute people for drug offenses. However, there is no clear evidence that the use of the death penalty for such crimes acts as a stronger deterrent than long terms of imprisonment. This because even even though the death penal the death penalty has been introduced to people who exercise drug trafficking, the drug trafficking activities are still ongoing from time to time moreover the activities has been increased throughout time and this argument of deterrence supposes that criminal study and anticipate the consequences of getting caught and decide that a long term of imprisonment is acceptable whereas execution is not but many crimes are committed on the spur of the moment leaving little opportunity for potential punishments to influence where the the crime is committed in the first place as criminals do not believe they will be caught and held to account and the death penalty may even cause further violence because execution is the ultimate sanction a state can inflict upon a person so once criminals have knowingly committed a capital offense they no longer have any interest interest in lessening their potential punishment by not committing further murders or other offenses for example if armed robbery carries the death penalty the robber loses nothing by committing more murders while attempting to flee as they know that they will be imposed by the death penalty either way so that is all from me